happy sunny afternoon. I'm here with Steve Cam from Nerd Fitness. Hey Say hi, Steve. Hey, what's up, guys? <laughs> um, so I asked Steve to join us to share with us his amazing story of his um, lifestyle design, uh, his digital nomad living, and also how he's built his amazing website and online community. So thank you for being with us. Oh, thanks so much for having me, Amber. I appreciate it. Yeah, welcome to San Francisco. It is beautiful. <laughs> it is. I know. Uh, I have not. Uh, it's the middle of January, and this is like the most perfect day I think I could have possibly hoped for while I've been out here. So yeah, I'm getting I'm getting a good part of San Fran, I think. Totally. I think it's like 70 degrees today. It's so warm. I'll take it. Yeah. yeah okay, not, not too bad. Okay. So tell us a little bit about NerdFitness.com. Sure. Uh, it's a site I've been running for three years now. I really just had this idea a couple years back that like, I'm a nerd. I like fitness. Let's. Can I combine them? Like, right. All right. So I, I looked it up, uh, and I couldn't find anything relating to nerds that wanted to get in shape. So I decided to start a community dedicated specifically to folks that spend all day at a desk job right. but wanted to get in shape and didn't really know where to begin. So it's a site dedicated to those folks that want to get started but don't really know how to and don't have that resource to look for. I wanted to become that guy. So Nerd Fitness was born, and three years later, here I am in San Fran. And so you are completely living off of your website at yes. this point, full time with this website. And mm -hmm. um, how large is your community now? Let's see. I just passed uh, thirteen thousand email and RSS subscribers. Uh, I have actually just passed two hundred thousand visits um, in the past thirty days. Wow! Uh, which is pretty cool. And then we have a message board community that's over four thousand people, and we just passed our hundred thousandth post. Uh, on the message boards Steve, too, which has been pretty cool. Me, oh, she's fantastic. Um, <laughs> no. Sorry, man. <laughs> You're talking to the wrong people. <laughs> that actually makes it kind of funny. What do you this say? guy just asked us if we had a light, and I uh, said, well, we're asking the wrong people. Totally asking the wrong people. <laughs> um, and so, on an everyday basis, I know, you know, three years ago you started this whole process, and you sold everything <clears> like I did, and you traveled the world, and you mm -hmm. did the digital nomad thing for quite some time, and you built it over these years. Um, now in your daily life, what does your day look like? How many hours are you working? Sure. It, my day, honestly, it, the, the best thing about this whole being able to be my own boss is that every day is completely different for me. Right. I am not one of those people that, that's great with routine or organization or things of that <laughs> nature. I'm, I'm horrible at that stuff. So my routine is honestly I'll wake up, uh, have a great breakfast. Uh, generally, I'll go work out. I like to do it in the morning because mm -hmm. I can do so when everybody else is at work and there's nobody around. And then I'll spend my afternoon generally answering emails, uh, getting caught up on, on basic work stuff. And the way I'm wired, I, I do my best writing from, I want to say, 10 p.m. until 3 in the morning. So I'm definitely a, oh, wow. I am definitely a night owl, and, which, is, which is funny. Uh, I initially, when I first went full-time with Nerd Fitness, I tried to force myself to do all my best work during the middle of the day right. because that's what I had been trained to do working a, a day job for the majority of my life. Um, but once I made the decision, like, okay, if you don't try to force yourself into these other routines that other people have, and instead find one that works best for you, like, my best content now comes late at night, uh, yeah. which is both fun and uh, makes, makes, interest, makes things interesting when, I'm, when I spend most of my time hanging out with folks that are still working during the day. So right, right. I, I, try to, I try to get enough sleep in there. Um, so I'll probably do every other night, I'll, I'll have a late session, and then on the other nights I'll just kind of relax and, and kind of hang out. Yeah, it's very, um, it's it's very kind of all over the place. Some days I work three hours, some days I won't work at all. Other days I work fourteen hours. It really de kind of depends on how I'm feeling, where my motivations are, what I'm excited about, and if I'm traveling or not. So right. it's kind of all over the place. And you travel extensively yes. now, and and back then you did as well. You traveled the world a couple times, and <laughs> you still do. And and so you're doing that all by working digitally. Online. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah I. Back in December of 2010, I had been full-time on Nerd Fitness for about six months at that point. Mm. And I sold all of my stuff and booked a 35,000-mile trip around the world and worked. I spent most of 2011 on the road working working one day, doing some crazy adventure the next day, and then working and taking two days off and vice versa. So it's been, it was, yeah, I, I spent all of 2011 essentially, technically, almost. But, you know, almost in a good way. Yeah, homeless in a nomad Right, way. exactly. Well, and then since then, you've, you've given speeches at Google and at Facebook and had some incredible experiences and obviously met amazing people along your journey. So it's only building and growing. And yes. I, I, can't, I can't tell you enough how happy I am for you. It's like oh, thank you very much. It's fantastic. And um, 
So I encourage you guys all to check it out. It's a great source of information and community. Um, and so just before we go, could mm -hmm. you just tell um, you know, my readers what you do every day to balance your mind, body, and spirit? Um, what does your kind of diet look like? And sure. are you, I know we chat a little bit, you're kind of paleo at this point. Mm -hmm. um, and so how does that look like? What does your eating look like? Sure. Well, my eating, it, it kind of depends on what my, my goals are. Right. I said I run a fitness website and I'm a big fan, of, personally a fan of strength training. Mm -hmm. So the majority of my workouts revolve around picking up heavy things and putting them down. Mm -hmm. That's what makes me happy. That's kind of my, my meditation is to put headphones in and and really kind of zone out and head to a gym and just pick up pick up some heavy weights and do things like squats and deadlifts and really old school barbell training. I've just I've fallen in love with it. So that's become my training style. Uh, and then as far as I eat uh, as eating goes, I would definitely say yeah, paleo is my my big thing. Uh, I just uh, I, I think as as you would recommend, eat real stuff. Eat like, real don't, food. Eat, yeah. eat real food and stop eating crap. Um, and I try to aim for about 80 percent proficiency or so. You know, I'll still enjoy myself on a weekend with unhealthy food or have a couple of beers and I'm okay with that because I know during the rest of the week I'm eating for a purpose and trying to eat as much real stuff as possible you know if it came out of the ground or was running around or whatever compared to heavily processed stuff I know I'm on the right path um, yeah I would say paleo and my workouts are what keep me grounded and constant and kind of my my reset on a daily basis would be to, to exercise and that's what keeps me on target Totally. And we were just both chatting about that traveling. It's, it's the one thing that really roots you down and, mm -hmm. and gives you some type of stability right. um, and routine, even though you're traveling all the time. And, mm, absolutely. Um, so I just have one question, because I, as you, as you know, I'm a raw vegan, and I'm vegan because of the impact of, well, for a lot of reasons, for health reasons, but also for uh, the impact on the planet. Mm -hmm because of the meat industry. So mm -hmm. what do you have to say about that, about uh, the environmental you know, impact? I think, I think there's, there's a right way to do it and a wrong way. I think the wrong way is the majority of the, the meat that's available out there. I know out here in San Francisco specifically, you know, local vores is a big, is a big thing. Mm -hmm. Like having local, you know, having, your, having your sources of your food, you know, even if you're not eating meat, you know, if you're eating uh, healthy foods, but they're coming from way down in South America or the other side of the country, you know, you still need fossil fuels and things of that nature to get it over to you. So regardless of whether or not you're eating meat, if you can do it, do so and eating vegetables and fruits or whatever, finding them from local sources like farmers markets and, um, you know, local farms and, and whatever, uh, you can have a much, you know, you can still feel okay with what you're eating and not have to worry so much about, you know, kind of tearing that, tearing that apartment, uh, tearing up the environment and of things course. of that nature. Mm -hmm because you're getting things from locally, and not only, not only the environment, but also you're supporting local businesses. So trying to get stuff from as close as, close as you to possible, or even, growing, or, or even growing your own stuff. Growing I mean, yeah, I know, people I have their own be, gardens, and yeah. I think that stuff like that is, is fantastic. And I wish, now that I have a home, um, well, kind of have a home, kind of have a home. <laughs> Once I do, I think that's stuff I definitely want to look into more, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you so much for being with us, Steve. Absolutely. And I'll post this out to you guys very soon, and enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thanks, guys. Take care. Bye.